Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We give you thanks, Father. We thank you that your mercies are new every morning and that your steadfast love never ceases. And in this place today, Father, we thank you for this brand new year that you've given us. We declare in Jesus' name that this year we will receive financial freedom. We declare that this year we will experience a harvest like any other. We believe that this year, 2017, will be our best year ever. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. From the front to the back, to the left and to the right, why don't you greet somebody beside you and say, Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Come on, tell the person, I missed you! It's so good to see you again! Woo! How many people believe? And because you believe, you're excited because you know that God is going to do amazing things in your life this year. Raise your hand. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. George said it a while ago, and I'm going to say it again. If you don't know it yet, one of the best decisions that you've ever done so far, and the wisest decision, is that you decided to show up here today. That's right. Welcome. Welcome to the feast, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to our brand new series as well. I feel like before we can roll into the energies of 2017, that it's only right for us to take a moment and park our hearts and give God some thanks for what He did last year before we can move forward this year. You believe that? So let's take like five seconds, ten seconds, to just clap our hands and just raise your voices. Come on, give a shout of praise. Come on, stop your feet. Stop your hands. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Now that you've got that out of your system, I feel we're ready. Are you ready for a brand new year? Yeah. yeah, that's right. So let's all together come into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stretch out your hands outward and all together say this with me. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings healing and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word so I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's Shout it out! Powerful champion! And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Stretch your hands out in honor of God's Word and sing with me. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Today we begin our new series called Best Year Ever. How many people are excited for this? Talk one is all about imagination. Everybody say imagination. And I'm going to share with you a brief story about the, the life of an Old Testament Bible character named Joseph. How many people name, know, know Joseph? He's a pretty famous character in the Bible. And he's pretty famous because he's, he, he had a wonderful gift. You know, Joseph at the age of 17, he could already see the future just by dreaming. That's how special he was. But the problem was, Joseph had 11 brothers and they didn't like him so much. Why? For the very same gift that he had, his brothers didn't like him. They disliked him because they thought that he was crazy. But in the story, we go, Joseph had a dream in Genesis 37, verse 7 11. He had a dream and he said to his brothers, listen to this dream I had. We were all out in the field gathering bundles of wheat when all of a sudden, my bundle stood straight up and your bundle circled around it and bowed down to mine. His brother said, so, so what? You're going to rule us? 
they're going to boss us around. And they hated him more than ever because of his dreams and the way they talk. Let me give you a few lessons, a life tip. You got to be real careful about the people you choose to share your dream to. Why? Because sometimes they're not going to believe the, the, the same things that you believe. Sometimes instead of encouraging you, they're going to discourage you. So you got to be very selective. Say selective. You got to choose the people. Because the truth is, friends, life says that people won't always see the way you see. And there are people you will meet who will have smaller minds than you. So don't ever let small-minded people convince you that your, that your dreams are too big. Don't ever let small-minded people prevent you from doing big things for God. You hear me? Don't ever do it. Tell the person beside you, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Second, second thing. We continue with the story. Joseph had another dream, and he told this one also to his brothers. I dreamed another dream that the sun and moon and eleven stars bowed down to me. But when he told it to his father and brothers, his father reprimanded him, saying, Joseph, what's up with all this dreaming? Am I and your mother and your brothers all supposed to bow down to you? Even his parents didn't believe him. You know, if you didn't know this already, if you've read your Bible stories, Joseph's vision actually came true 15 years later. Because you see, when he was thrown into slavery, a few years after that, he became a slave for 11 years. But after that, his parents and his brothers, his entire family, all bowed down to him. Because why? He became the governor of Egypt. But we didn't know this until we knew the ending. But if you read the story, man, you got to read the Bible because Joseph's story is amazing. Before he could reach and achieve that dream, he had to go through a lot of hard stuff in his life. I mean, imagine being thrown into a well, your brothers plotting to kill you, and then after that, being sold into slavery for 11 years. I don't think we ever experienced anything that bad. After being a slave, he thought he was going to get a good life already, but then something happened. He was falsely accused of rape, and he was thrown into prison. I mean, man, this guy had a hard life. How many people experienced some hardships last year? Come on, raise your hand. I feel you. I feel you. Last year was hard for me. But let me tell you the crux of this whole thing, why, I, why I'm telling you this story. I'll illustrate it to you, for that matter. I got a ball with me and two pillows. I want you to look at what I'm doing with the first example. Okay? What's happening? The ball is not doing anything. It's supposed to bounce back. But here, with the other pillow... You know, it's bouncing a little higher. It's bouncing a little higher. Why am I showing you this? Because you need to know that the hardships that you went through last year, and you thought they were bad, you know, they were trials, they were struggles. But if your life was soft and you didn't have to go through struggles, you know, the ball wouldn't be bouncing. But as you go through trials in your life, man, you got to listen to this. You see the ball starting to rise higher. And what your trials are doing, actually, is creating and laying down the foundation of your life. So as you go through troubles this year, as you go through struggles this year, the harder your life has been, the higher the bounce back will be. You're going to get through. You're going to go through some troubles this year. You're going to go through some financial difficulties this year. But by God's grace, because the harder your life was years ago, last year, the higher your bounce back will be this year. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Come on, shout if you believe it. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Can I invite you to bow down your heads? God, we thank you so much for this wisdom that you've given us. It's the first feast of this brand new year and we're so excited to be here because we know, we know that you're already setting up for a comeback from that setback that we thought was going to be our end. But we're still standing, Jesus, and it's because of your grace that we are here. Because of your strength, not ours. Your wisdom, not ours. And so with surrendered hearts, 
Father, we give all our life to you. And we open ourselves because we know that you alone have the plans for us, plans to prosper us, plans to give us hope, and plans to give us a beautiful future. So we thank you, Jesus, for this promise and for your faithfulness. We love you, we honor you, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You've got a big hand, everybody. hand for Brother Audie, a big hand for the worship team. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Please be seated. Touch somebody beside you. Tell that person God will speak to you today. And one more time, I just want to greet you. Happy, happy, happy new year. And while I'm at it, happy three kings and happy valentines and happy Easter and happy birthday and it's good to celebrate. Say amen. It's good, good, good to celebrate. Today I'm going to talk about imagination. If you want to have a best year, you need to imagine. Everybody say imagination. And here's my one big message. Everybody say, I'm listening. Paint beautiful paintings. Everybody say that with me. Tell somebody beside you, nudge that person, elbow him and, and her, or tell that person, paint beautiful paintings. Brother Bo, I'm not a painter. Yes, you are. You're a painter. I'm a painter. Ask me how. You're a painter. I'm a painter because every single thought in your mind is a brush stroke in the canvas of your imagination. Did you hear me? Let me say that again. Just, just, just let it sink in. Every single thought in your mind is a brush stroke in the canvas of your imagination. And that canvas is magical. Everybody say magical. It's magical because what you imagine, what you paint in the canvas of your imagination can appear in your reality. You know, we are the only species that God created on planet Earth that can imagine a future scenario. Are there pet lovers here? Raise your hand. You've got a pet? Dogs? Cats? Crocodiles? You know, whatever pet you have, I'm telling you now, no matter how intelligent they look like, you know, cats, they, they look intelligent, right? They really do. You, you know, you come home and the dog is just welcoming you, you know, wagging his tail, jumping up and down. The cat, you enter the house, the cat looks at you and then snubs you. It's just like, like I'm so intelligent. Like, but you know what? No matter how, in, how, how that cat of yours, you think it is intelligent, it cannot, it cannot imagine a future scenario. Your cat cannot say, Five years from now, I want to eat Spanish sardines, you know. And then the, the cat will try to imagine. It, it can't. It cannot imagine the way you and I do. Now, here's the thing. God has given us this beautiful capacity to imagine, but He gave us two, two capacities, actually. The first one is the ability to paint the present. Everybody say, paint the present. We have the ability to paint our reality. And, and, and that's a good thing. But He also gave us the ability to paint the future. Everybody say, paint the future. You need both. Our problem is this. There are so many people who use only the first capability. They just love to paint the present. They just paint reality. And you know what? It's not imagination really. It's more of description. You just want to describe. The crazy thing about this is if you have the ability to paint the present, what happens is you just look at the present and, and, and you look at the weaknesses. Usually you're more biased to the negative. You look at what's wrong and, and, and you paint what's wrong. And in 2016, how many of you, be honest with me, you, you, 
you went through some rough times in 2016. Raise your hand if, if, if you... If you, yeah, so some people hurt you in 2016. Some people rejected you in 2016. You went through failure in 2016. You had some relationship problems in 2016. And, and the thing is, the thing is, you can just paint reality. You can paint the present and, and that's all that's going to happen. Guess what? There is no hope there. There's no hope. And when there's no hope, my friend, you need hope to live. You understand me? Let's, let's, can, can I show what you're painting? Okay, here it is. Here it is. Ready? Ta da! Yeah, look, look, looks like him. Paint the present. It's needed. You don't want to deny what's happening to you. You don't want to die. But if all you do is paint the present, it'll be difficult to move on. There are people here in this room. There are people here in this room. You're stuck in 2016. You were so hurt and you were so bombarded by problems in 2016. You can't move on. Why? Because you're just painting the present. I've got news for you. God has a beautiful future for your life. And you need to learn how to paint the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. This guy over here, he's painting the future. He's painting the future. Wow. C can I show to the audience? Wow. Does it look realistic? He was so sad in that chair. How did you see this? Gosh. Do you agree with this guy? Now, listen to me. When you paint the future, this is what happens. You begin to be biased about the possibilities. And what happens is, he's dressing up. He's actually dressing up. He's got shoes on. Once upon a time, he didn't have shoes. Painting the future means your imagination is not only describing what's happening, your imagination will impact your present and will create something new. Do I hear a loud amen? Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. That's a very important message I want to share with you. You know, if right now you're still stuck in what happened in 2016, that's it. You're going to go through 2017 with the same mindset and you're gonna say oh no I can't move on but I want you to start imagining victory in 2017 I want you to imagine you know I love Audie's illustration about the ball yes that you need to bounce if, if you had a hard life last year let it be the foundation for you to bounce up strong and I want you to, if, if your relationship didn't work out last year, I want you to realize this. With a dose of love, with a dose of humility, and with a dose of forgiveness, your relationships will be victorious this coming year. I want you to believe in that. I want you to claim that. And I, I also want you to believe, if your finances were bad last year, I, I, want you to, I want you to say, that was last year. This year is a new year. And I'm making a decision. I'm going to take steps. I'm going to, and I want you to imagine the abundance of God flowing into your life. I want you to think of that. I want you to hold someone's hand, please. Hold someone's hand. T tell that person. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze that hand. Look that person in the eye. And tell that person your future is so beautiful. I, I want you to believe in that. And I want you to imagine... There was an Australian psychologist by the name of Alan Richardson. And he had this crazy experiment that he did. Alan Richardson, 
he went into a school and at random just chose a bunch of students. And what he did was he brought them all to the basketball court. And then he formed them into three groups. Group one, group two, and group three. And then group one, he told them, guys, I want you to practice. Everybody say practice. Free throws every day for 20 days. And then I want to see if you improve. And so this bunch of students, you know, said, okay, we're going we're, we're gonna to do this experiment. Every single day, they reported to the basketball court. They shot some free throws and, and you know, did it for 20 days. And then he goes to the second group and he says, guys, I want you to shoot a free throw on day one. And then on day 20, I want you to come back to the basketball court and then shoot some free throws. And then the student said, what will we do from day two to day 19? And Alan Richardson said, nothing. Go your merry way. Don't do a thing from day two to day 19. And then he got a third bunch of kids, of students, and he said, this is what you do. I want you to shoot your free throw on day one and day 20. And the students ask, what will we do from day two to day 19? Ask me what? He said, imagine. Don't hold the ball. No, 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 no. What I want you to do is go to your room every day and imagine being in the basketball court. You're in your bedroom, but imagine you're in the basketball court. Imagine that you're standing on the wooden floor. Imagine that you're holding that leather ball. Let it let, dribble the ball in your mind. Hear the ball dropping on the floor, bouncing on the floor. Hear, hear, hear the crowd around you. Hold that ball and then shoot those free throws in your mind from day two and day three and day four, five, six, seven, all the way to 19. And then report to the basketball court on day 20 and shoot free throws. Do you know what happened at the end of the experiment? Do you wanna, you wanna know the results? You wanna know? Okay, I'll tell you next week. Uh, you really wanna know? Pressure me. Brother Bo! Okay, here we go. Group one. They practice every day, yes? You know the improvement was phenomenal. 24% accuracy improvement. 24% just practicing after 20 days. Their performance improved by 24%. I want you to elbow somebody really hard and tell that person, practice. That's, that, that, that's, how it, that's how you get better. You, just by doing it. Doing it. Now, you know, you know what happened to group two? Ask me what. You know how, how the group, you, you know what group two did, right? What did group two do? Shout it out. What did group two do? Nice. <laughs> Nothing. You know their improvement? Nothing as well. No surprise there. Guys, if you don't do anything, Nothing will happen to your life. Yes or no? Yes. You don't want to be group two, please. Group three. Now that was phenomenal. Let me review. In group three, they shot balls on the first day, just as a baseline measurement, yes? They went back to the basketball court. Day 20, shot balls, right? Day two to day 19, what did they do? They just imagined shooting balls. Their improvement? 23%. You don't believe me. It's documented. It's documented. 23%. It's almost like group one. They didn't they have to break sweat. They did not sweat. They, can you imagine? They did not get dirty. They were just in their pajamas, imagining. And they improved almost like group one. That's how powerful your imagination is. My dear friends, if it works in basketball, it works anywhere. Think with me. Why, why can I preach this way with confidence? Ask me why. 
Because before I step on stage, every single time I'm at the feast, before I step on stage, I'm imagining myself preaching to you. In fact, I imagine myself preach to you four times. Today, I'm preaching you my fifth talk. It's, it's exactly like that. It's imagining what's happening and, and seeing. And, and when you do that in anything, now think about it. You can imagine your future. And it has a tremendous impact on your life. Do I hear a loud amen? amen. You've got to be able to paint that beautiful picture. Now listen to me. This, this imagination thing, it's a loaded gun. It's so powerful, you can use it for bad, you can use it for good. You can use it for evil. Hitler, Hitler killed 6 million Jews and 6 million other Europeans, 12 million people. Now think with me, what was his most potent, deadliest weapon ever? Was it a gas chamber? Was it the bloody concentration camps? Was it the barbaric prison? No, no, no. His deadliest weapon, ask me what? His imagination. He imagined all of Europe under the Nazi regime. He imagined the concentration camps. He imagined the, the death of Jews. He imagined. That's how powerful it is. Today, I stand before you imagining a bright future. I'm, I, I stand before you imagining a hundred thousand feasts all over the world. I'm imagining that some of you here clapping your hands will be leading feasts in your homes and in your offices. Silence. <laughs> you know, we, I, I believe that. I really, really do. Because, you know, you, you come here, you sit down, you enjoy the message, you love the singing, the worship, you go home and you say, wow, that's good. I'm recharged. Next week, you come back again, you sit down again, you, you listen, absorb the talk, you absorb the energy, you worship God, and then you go home and you say, I'm recharged. Recharged for what? Why not serve during the week? Why not build your own feast? I just talked to a 16-year-old girl a few weeks ago. She told me, Tito Bo, my mother started a feast video in her office. 20 people came. It's our third meeting. Tito Bo, my mom told me to lead worship for the feast video. Tito Bo, I could not believe it. This is a 16-year-old girl sharing while I was leading. Can you just imagine she was leading a group of adults? Yes or no? It's the office mates of her mom. 16-year-old. She, she said, when I started leading worship, I opened my eyes. I saw people crying. Wow. You think you only cry here in the big feast? No. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. And when you build a small feast in your home or in your office, the Holy Spirit will work there and, and use you. You, you, know why the, you know why there are now 285 feasts around the world? It started here in the imagination. And now it's a reality. Do you know why I believe there are going to be, there's going to be 100,000 feasts? Because we're imagining it. And I'm painting that picture in your imagination. Do you see yourself leading that feast? Do you see yourself serving that small feast? It's happening. It's happening right now. I, I just want to end. Put your hand over your chest. Everybody say this after me. I'm a prophet. One more time. I'm a prophet. Brother Bo, the, a, a prophet is somebody who predicts the future. Diba? Well, I have a new definition of a prophet. Ask me what? Complete sentence. What is a prophet? A prophet does not predict the future. A prophet produces the future. You produce it. Remember that, that, that painting that I held and how he started wearing his Barong Tagalog? Same thing. Prophesy through your words and through your imagination. You know what? You can make a dream board. Everybody say dream board. Are there people here who brought their dream boards? Are there? Could you raise it? Lift it up? I want you to, I want you to show it to the world. Come on. Show it. Yeah, cameraman, can you just show? 
you know what a dream board is? It's an illustration board or, or some, some piece of paper. And then you start putting photos and you start drawing and putting words. Lift it up, lift, lift it up. Come on, come on, lift it up. Yes, be proud of your dreams. The camera will, sh will, will capture that. Uh, all I see is up there. There, there, there it is. There it is. Wonderful. How about that woman here on the second, on the, on the, get, the get this one here. Get this one here. Yeah, 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 there, 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 wow, you want to have a transport fleet, thank you, um, for the next few Sundays of, of, Janu of January, for the, for, for the whole series, best year ever, bring your dream boards, every Sunday, bring it, and then lift it up, okay, I'm going to call on a dear friend. She's going to stand here on stage. She's going to share to you her experience of dream boards. Please welcome my dearest, dear, dear friend, Penny Bongato. Thank you, Brother Bo. Good morning. My name is Penny Bongato. I work in a BPO association. I'm a part-time faculty at De La Salle College of St. Benil. I'm a certified Canfield Success Principles trainer. I'm a lifelong learner and a dreamer. I am blessed with a loving family, my husband, Sammy, my children, Miko and Mikey, Miguel and Chet, Paolo and Leah. I've been attending the feast since 2011. And for the first time when I attended the feast then, I felt different. I felt I was home. Like many of us, or like all of us, and for the first-timers, you will get this, the novena to God's love. So when I went home, I read the novena, and I thought of, about, I thought of my dreams. What are my dreams? So I wrote my dreams in that novena, and every Sunday I would come here and raise that, lift that novena and declare that the Lord is helping us. The Lord is helping me making my dreams come true. In 2014, I attended a workshop entitled Breakthrough to Success by Jack Canfield. Jack Canfield is the author of Chicken Soup for the Soul and is author of The Success Principles. We talked about how to get from where you are to where you want to be. We talked about how to fulfill our dreams. And life purpose, goal setting, visualization, imagination, feeling the feeling, and of course, taking action and having an attitude of gratitude. When the, purpose, when the life purpose exercise was there, I asked myself, what is my life purpose? What did God create me in this world to do? I realized that my life purpose was to share with others my blessings, my life purpose is to be able to inspire and help others be the best that they can be. My life purpose is to help others make their dreams come true. And I also realized that that workshop is something that I want to do for the Filipinos. I wanted to be a trainer of the success principles. So during the break time of one of those five-day workshop, I gave my phone or I handed my phone to one of my colleagues and I went up stage and I asked, I pretended that I was conducting the workshop. So that photo that you see is pretend only. Pang photo op. Pang photo op lang yun. But that was created so that I can just not just imagine, but really feel it. Really imagining it deep in my heart. I went home that after that workshop and created my 2015 vision board. And my vision board included simple things like running a, work, running a 5K race, being certified in the success principles, doing my own workshop, being healthy, having a lot of money, of course, and having my own company. I imagined it. I read, read my dream board every day. I looked at my, my gratitude journal as well. And I was confirming, affirming that it was happening to me now. So what did I achieve in 2015? 
I said I will run a 5K race. And did I run a 5K race? So I did run a 5K race. And I finished and I planted in my mind that I'll run my 5K race in May. However, I finished it in October. So never mind the, fi the many months delay. I still completed it. And if you take a look at that picture, the body is not mine. Oh, oh ibang body yan. Linagay ko lang yung picture ko. So if you want to do your dream board, that's a strategy. I also wanted to become a certified Canfield trainer so that I can teach this workshop here in the Philippines. I want to be certified. And I was able to do that. I achieved my certification in August 8th of 2015, months ahead of my schedule. I also wanted to conduct this workshop for Filipinos by December 30, 2015. And I was able to do that, my first public workshop on October 17, 2015 at the Philippine Bible Society. 2016 is a different year. and 2016, I had my contribution and community goal of being able to share at Aspicio de San Jose. Every year, my family and I would go to Aspicio for the past six years. But last year, we wanted it to be more grand. We wanted to be able to help others feel what we have felt. Being able to share with others the feeling of blessing others as well. And I was fortunate enough to get other families to join us in that sharing. What is my 2017 goals? Of course, like some of you, I have my own vision board for 2017. And my vision board has a lot. It has 10 items there. But my top three. First, my family. I am happy and grateful that I am bonding with my family and with our new grandchild. That picture is picture of my children and picture of my family. If you see that baby, that baby is not ours. Pretend lang yan, kasi ang aking mother, uh, daughter-in-law, ay mga anak pa lang. So really pretend, imagine, and I can feel it that we will be bonding closely this year. My second dream is to be able to publish my book called Career Shift. And I was able to do I feel I can do this because I was able to do a lot more last year when my story, Proudly Filipino, was published in Jack Canfield's book, Living the Success Principles. And my last, third, is being here today, sharing with you. It has always been my dream to share at the feast. Madaming beses ko kinulit si Brother Bo. Brother Bo, can you help me make my dream come true? And it's only January 8th, and now my dream has come true. So thank you, Brother Bo. And of course, thank you, Lord. These dreams that I have, you know, in pa painting the dreams in your mind, putting it in canvas, putting in it in photos, and being able to feel it, Please remember that all these dreams are not my dreams alone. These dreams are dreams that have been put in my heart by the Lord. I have been blessed and I want to share the blessings with others. Every morning, I read, I look at my vision board, my dream board. I read everything that's written there and feel it already. And I also say, Thank you, Lord, for the overflowing blessings in my life. Thank you, Lord, for putting these dreams in my heart. Thank you, Lord, for making my dreams come true. I lift all my dreams to you. And I know that 2017 is, and I'm declaring it, is my best year ever. Thank you. Can you all stand up? We're going to pray, bring to the Lord our future. May I invite you to lift your hands up. All, your, all those with dream boards, might as well lift them up as well as a symbol of your future. Say this after me, Lord Jesus. I bring before you my future. 
My dear friends, I want you to imagine, start imagining your future. Start imagining the victory that will happen this coming year in specific areas of your life. Your, your most important area is your spiritual life, your, your love for God. Imagine yourself loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Imagining, imagine God blessing you in this specific area. Your relationship will God, with God will go closer, tighter. I want you to imagine yourself serving Him, serving Him in some way where, where you're able to share God's love to people. That when people see you, they will see Jesus. I, I want you to also to imagine your relationships having more forgiveness, more tenderness, more compassion, more mercy. Imagine all your relationships, your friendships, your family. Overflowing with love. I want you to imagine school, work, finances, receiving the abundance of God. Debts being paid, new income streams, more income so you can help more people. I want you to imagine every other area of your life experiencing victory. Say this after me, Jesus, I surrender my whole life to you. I'm surrendering my imagination. I'm surrendering to you. My future, I trust you. Amen. Let's lift up our hands to God as a sign that we are surrendering all our dreams to Jesus.
Come on, lift up your voices. opening your future in front of you sometimes we don't see how beautiful the future is because all we look at is the darkness and the pain of the past I want to pray for you this moment just say this after me Jesus I hold on to your promise that forever and ever and ever you will be with me I hold on to this promise today I receive your love your peace your healing your strength your joy your power your miracles today I receive Jesus name. Amen. around somebody beside you and just tell that person you'll have your best year ever 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 amen amen Hallelujah. we created a feast journal and uh, 
I was part of the design team. The, you know, I, w I want people to attend the feast writing down notes, like, like writing down thoughts and inspiration. So it comes in two variants. You, 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 if you want, you know, some, some dark thing or some yellow. Is this yellow? Gold. Okay, gold. And you, in each page, you have uh, like what title of the talk, you, you put there the speaker, and then you also put one big message. Like today, what's, the, what's our one big message? Paint beautiful paintings. So you write it down there. And then you, you write two things. The big chunk would be realizations. Realizations. And then here at the bottom, we call it resolutions. What decisions will you make after the talk? And, and you can use this for, you know, when you share to people in your light groups or when you have a feast video, you know, you can share this to your group. So, so very, very inexpensive, uh, not, not, not expensive at all. It's uh, outside if you, if you want it, all right? The, the other thing that we want to invite you, if you want to work on your health this coming year, join our how to heal yourself naturally it's a seminar on february 4 february 4 to improve your health this coming year and then a second uh, seminar is how to make millions in the stock market that's mine it's uh, january 28 all right amen can i can i invite all the first timers in the house to raise their hand first timers <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome to our home. There's a please join us in the first time attendees uh, gathering there. We want to give you a little gift and pray for you. Thank you so much. We've got three friends here who come all the way from our feast in Indonesia. They're they're not Filipinos. They're Indonesians and they're part of our family. Welcome. <laughs> everybody say, I'm blessed. Let's rejoice in the Lord, everybody. Let's continue to praise our God. Come on, hey.